Focus. Ideate. Innovate. Enable. Hello and a very warm welcome to CNBC TV 18 presents Building the Indian Economy Importance of Dairy for Atmanirbhar Bharat. It is hard to believe that there ever was a time when India faced shortage of milk. From importing milk in the 50s and the 60s to be ranked first in the global milk production, we have really come a long way. India is the world's largest milk producer with 23% of global production, followed by United States of America, China, Pakistan and Brazil. India's dairy sector is a perfect example of Atmanirbhar Bharat and is a progressively developing industry. India also hosted the World Dairy Summit for 2022 after a gap of about 48 years. Our special program today looks at dairy journey and celebrates the success of white revolution and deliberates on what next. Joining me today on this panel, my team of experts, Dr. R.S. Sodhi, MD Amul, Dr. Uma Kandash, Director IRMA, Minesh Shah, Chairman, National Dairy Development Board, Kinjal Shah, Vice President and Co-Group Head, Corporate Ratings, ICRA. Welcome to the show. Dr. Sodhi, if I may start with you, what role has the dairy sector played in transforming India's rural economy? What, according to you, have been some of the milestones? Well, I can only say what it is today. Today, dairy sector is contributing to the India's GDP and the rural sector GDP by 9 lakh crore rupees per annum, which is around 5% of the GDP and 30% of the agriculture GDP in India. But if you go back, when India got independence, when the agriculture GDP was more than 70%, dairy was negligible, less than 1%. And today, it is more than 30% of the agriculture. So today, more than the rural economy, the women, financial independence and the, their income has gone up. And today, average rural household is driving around 14% of their income from uh, dairy and animal spending. So gradually, if you see after 25 years, what today you mentioned 23% to the world dairy production, after 25 years, we'll be contributing 45% of world milk production. Because uh, every 25 years, we multiply our milk production by 3x. 70, if you see 74, it was 21, 22 metric ton. About 50, uh, 25 years, it was 74, and today, three times more than 220 million metric tons. So, Minesh, if I can get you in, India has uh, one of the largest. Uh... Uh, cattle inventories and while our systems are robust we are still witnessing outbreaks of various diseases there have been challenges what kind of efforts should go into our cattle care we are working on uh, two broad strategies actually as you are rightly saying the cattle productivity in our country though we are the largest milk producer in the world the cattle productivity is still a challenge and so for improving the productivity per animal productivity of milk per animal we are working on three aspects, animal breeding, animal health, and animal nutrition. On the health uh, front, we are going for a massive uh, vaccination program, NADCP. It's a program where every cattle in the country is uh, vaccinated for FMD and brucellosis uh, every year. And 100% grant is being provided by government of India. On the nutrition front, we are working on uh, on the uh, di different uh, fodder uh, production, how we can support uh, green fodder and also the nutritious feed for the animal. And we are working uh, extensively on the nutrition aspect and on breeding, which is the most important. So after the artificial insemination, which was aimed at improving the genetic uh, uh, progress of the cattle, now we are working on sex sorted semen. So that will help to have at least 80-85% of the animal who are uh, vac uh, and who have done AI, they will have female calf born. We are going for the programs uh, like uh, ET and IVF. So we are producing embryos of the good genetic uh, quality animal uh, from the female calf. And then uh, having with the surrogating, we are 
you know, using IVF technology, we are multiplying uh, the good genetic material. And uh, these all these programs supported under Rashtri Gokul Mission, which is again a government of India scheme, which is being implemented by NDDB. We are working uh, to improve the productivity of animal, uh, which will help us to grow further from here for milk production. Kinjal Operation Flood was launched on 13th January 1970. It was the world's largest dairy development program and a landmark project of India's National Dairy Development Board. What have been the major learnings from Operation Flood and also the cooperatives? Uh, how this whole uh, setup can be replicated? Well, you rightly said that it is the world's largest dairy development program. Uh, so the backbone of this mission was the vision of Dr. Kurian to improve the income of small farm holdings and make the dairy industry a sustainable employer for rural India. The basic principle that uh, he worked with is that the farmers and not the government institutions be the main drivers behind the establishment of cooperatives so that their interests are protected. Uh, the cooperative model has been beautifully applied the pyramid structure of business, wherein the producer is adequately compensated for his produce without any leakage in the system through the use of middlemen. So it just not eliminates the internal competition between the milk unions, but is also ensuring better economies of scale. Uh, the other main learning from this entire structure has been the excess these farmers have got to the pan-India market, not just the local mandis, as well as for their exports of products, and not just the milk, but also the value-added products. So this has facilitated more farmers to join the initiative and follow an entrepreneurial route, which in turn is the backbone of the Atmanirbhar initiative we are talking about. So I think in our view, uh, the cooperative model can be used in several other agri-related sectors for sure, like fisheries, poultry, horticulture, uh, which will further boost farmer income and also provide sustainable employment. Uh, such practices are already prevalent in some states at small scale, but the larger benefit will arise only when it is followed by more and more states at a larger scale. Dr. Sodi, uh, you wanted to deliberate on this as well. Well, besides what Kinjalji mentioned, see, cooperative model is nothing but a different way of doing business, like we are doing business as a partnership, public, private, limited companies, a different type of business model. And relevance for it is increasing day by day because cooperative way of doing business is basically for the small people, where small farmers, small artisan, even the in urban India, also small taxi fellow, restaurant fellow, small traders, where they all can form a cooperative, come on a platform, aggregate their producer services, and market their underground brand name. So that is why you see government of India recognize it. And that is why, you know, in central government, separate, separate cooperative ministry has been formed. So that due focus can be given in building a business for small people in a big way through cooperative model. Dr. Dash, when we look at the cooperative model, we have seen it helping in improving the purchasing power of Heartland India. What, according to you, works in the system and how it can be further strengthened? This particular uh, movement, which not only increased the purchasing power, so for example, if you take even uh, now close to 65, 65 to 70 percentage of our households, they are residing in, in the rural areas and semi-urban areas. And the dairy movement uh, and other cooperative movements have helped us to increase their income, uh, double, uh, almost increase their purchasing power. So this purchasing power, increase the purchasing power has a multiplier effect. If you take the backward linkage and forward linkage of uh, the sector, uh, it's not, not only the purchasing power of uh, those who are involved in these cooperatives, their, theirs have increased, but also those who are in, uh, directly, indirectly related to the sector their income has also increased significantly. So you'll see the multiplier effect has contributed in a significant manner in increasing the GDP of the country. This sector is has a potential which is going to, what we're talking about today, doubling the income of the farmers or tripling the income of the farmers. That is very much possible with the help of the, the emergence and re-emergence of this cooperative movement to cooperative sector. Second thing, um, you'll see uh, when we are talking about the Atma Nirvar Bharat, uh, this Atmanirbhar Bharat will be possible only when the rural India is uh, self-reliant. So when we are talking about, uh, uh, so say, Sarkar Samriddhi, the Samriddhi is nothing but uh, improving the well-being 
which is possible only through uh, increasing the standard of living of uh, the the households. Uh, so that, therefore, you will see uh, the the cooperation or the Ministry of Cooperation that we are talking about. It's not only the cooperatives, uh, say existing only in the agriculture sector or uh, other sectors. So now you'll see there is also a scope of cooperation between uh, uh, cooperatives and corporates. So which is going to further increase the standard of living and the income of uh, the, the people who are involved in the cooperative sector. Dr. Sodi, if I may come to you uh, on the same question, would want a comment from you on that. And also now uh, we are seeing a rise in direct to consumer Zoom deliveries in the dairy sector. What is contributing to this? And I'm sure it comes with its own set of challenges. You see, what you talk about purchasing power of rural household is basically is the income they derive from selling their agricultural produce. In, the, in this case, it is milk. If I'll give you an example, in case of Gujarat, every day, 150 crore rupees given to the 18,000 villages of the Gujarat, and that 150 crore is converted into purchasing power, purchase of other FMCG and other household goods. At India level, total cooperatives per day are pumping around 600 to 650 crore rupees per day. And if you add private sector, because they also have to compete with the cooperative, they have to give another 500 to 600. So 11 to 1200 crore rupees, this organized sector is pumping into rural economy so they can buy the FMCG and other things. And now coming to your uh, second question, direct to home. See, direct to home is very good and it is going to become day by day more popular. But for the bulk of fresh product is very, very relevant. Because we want to buy every day, we want to buy in the morning, and we may not like to go early morning out. So we have seen gradually in most of the city, direct to home milk and fresh product deliveries are increasing. And it is not only for milk. Now with milk, you can sell or the online uh, the platform can sell other things like uh, fresh fruits, uh, vegetables, eggs, poultry, meat, anything they can market along with the milk. So you can buy online all the fresh product. Kinjal, we are now going to the next level in our cold supply chain. Milk and milk products need the correct temperature. Burme products need correct temperature for storage and supply at all times. What kind of investments are needed for strengthening the coal supply chain and how can this be made financially viable? So definitely, I mean, I mean throughout the value chain of uh, dairy, uh, the coal supply chain uh, plays a very important role and currently that's a major challenge that the industry is facing. Uh, so uh, if we see, I mean, most of the coal storage facilities are currently located near the point of production of the milk, but in the uh, supply chain downstream, upstream, uh, there are not many facilities available. And this has resulted in uh, perishability of the products because of the longer time taken to reach the facilities and the end consumers. Uh, so what really uh, companies are doing in order to avoid this is that uh, since milk as a in its normal form cannot be stored for a long period of time, uh, they typically convert the excess raw milk to skim milk powder that can be used later during the lean season uh, through milk reconstitution and also through production of value added products. Uh, so just to give some statistics around, I think 52% of the total uh, dairy industry revenues currently are generated from these uh, value added products. So, uh, but this products could also demand storage uh, since they have a longer shelf life, uh, they get stored for a longer period of time. And given the sector's growth prospects, uh, significant investments will be needed in the supply chain overall for milk storage and delivery. Um, uh, to see the financial viability uh, the Department of Animal Husbandry and Dairying uh, that has created some uh, 15,000 crore uh, fund uh, to offer financial support to the industry on beneficial terms. Uh, and the government has also been announcing uh, several uh, PLI schemes uh, to facilitate the infrastructure growth. So uh, that is really supporting the uh, development of infrastructure uh, in the industry and should support the growth in the times to come. Right. Let's slip into a short break at this point in time. But when we come back, we look at how technology is contributing into the dairy sector. 
and what new trends are emerging. Stay with us. Welcome back. You're watching our special presentation where we are deliberating on building the Indian economy and importance of dairy for Atmanirbhar Bharat. If I come to you, uh, Dr. Dash, technology has been a game changer for several industries. And with dairy also, we see massive transformation. What has tech done for us and what can it further do? Like other sectors, I think technology has become a very much integral part of uh, the entire sector. From uh, procurement of milk to processing of uh, the milk and then distribution and sales at the, for, to the consumers. Everywhere you will see the technology has helped uh, both the consumers and the producers to a great extent. The consumers, they are, they are getting uh, the quality product because of better technology being used from uh, the process, process and uh, delivery. The, the producers, they are getting, for example, if you take uh, the, the farmers, they are getting uh, the prices of their products then and there but through the e platforms. Immediately, the money is transferred to their accounts. So you'll see uh, this has impacted, improved the efficiency in the delivery of uh, the product, improved the effectiveness in the, pro in the production of uh, the, the, the all the products, the, the agro products or the dairy products. I think uh, it's not only uh, it helped the producers and consumers in getting good product, but also it has faced them the right price and could be able to send it to the right place. So if you take the entire market, the market got benefited because of the adoption of technology. Now with the introduction of AI and ML, uh, we are in a position to assess the market better, process the data better, and able to give the assure the right price to the farmers and the cooperative, uh, all those who are part of the cooperative sector. Minish, what about technology is exciting you? We are also seeing a product revolution in the dairy market, and we see now organic milk, organic butter, cheese, flavored milk, lassi, so many other things. Uh, uh, and uh, value addition is needed here as well. And I'm guessing tech is the great leveler. What I would like to highlight is apart from, uh, you know, technology on milk and milk products, I think the biggest uh, digital technology which we are uh, working with the Department of Animal Husband Dairying is the National Digital Livestock Mission. What we are trying to do is to have end-to-end -end traceability for the milk when it is milked at the farmer level to the uh, milk and milk products, which is consumed by the consumer. So entire value chain we are trying to have uh, you know, traceability uh, set up uh, so that National Digital Livestock Mission is working for entering all the uh, data of all the animals. You know, as you have told, we have 30 crore animals in our country and we will have every animal with the ear tag, uh, uh, you know, entered into uh, the portal. We started with a portal called ENAP at NDTB level and now it is accepted as a national database of 30 crore animal, we already have 20 crore animals data already recorded in the uh, portal. We also have the data for the owners and that will enable us to have the digital technology, you know, usage where India has a, uh, you know, a plus point to establish that every milk which we produced, every treatment we do with the animal, every other, uh, you know, like AI or calving or any other activity which we perform on animal, will be available on the uh, portal for the policy makers to uh, recite right policy going forward. Dr. Saudi, India has been successful in shoring up milk production. It's a mammoth task. How are these global standards maintained? As far as uh, Indian standards of uh, dairy products are concerned, I think it is matching, if not above the best of the world standard, be the codex or other. Because the India FSSAI and other standard uh, monitoring agencies of central government, you see, our standards are much higher than the other countries. And it is not only monitored by the various government agencies, but also the various brands and the cooperatives. And if you go to any of cooperatives' laboratory, the best of the laboratories, in India, the best of the equipments, which you'll see. Because right from Dr. Vagris Kurian days, which he said, in technology, we have not to compromise. And being a farmer's organization, we have to go for world's best technology, 
be it for processing, be it for uh, testing, be it for logistics. Time now to wrap up, uh, but I do want to know what is exciting you in this space now. We may call it the White Revolution 2.0. I'll start with you, Kinjal, your closing comments. There is significant growth expected for the industry. Uh, India continues to be the largest producer of milk in the world. And we're seeing a lot of production and exports happening on the uh, value-added products as well. So uh, significant growth expected, and we will see huge investments coming into the sector. Minesh, what according to you will be the next level game changer? Dairy development is not only about uh, the commodity called milk. It's uh, about the socio-economic transformation of India's rural households. And I think we will continue to strive to bring happiness uh, in the lives of millions of dairy farmers across our country. And, you know, in realizing uh, the dream of transforming India from being Atmanirbar in milk to becoming a actually major exporter of milk and milk products to the rest of the world. Dr. Dash, what is exciting you most about the space in the coming years? Well, the dairy sector is going to be definitely the growth engine for, of the economy. When we are talking about the 5 trillion economy by 2030 or 30 trillion economy, this sector is going to be the game changer for uh, India as a whole. And uh, it's going to happen soon. Dr. Sodi, your closing comments, given that Amul is synonymous with milk, uh, what about the space in the next few years leading to White Revolution 2.0 is exciting you? I can say because of our present most supply chain efficient model where farmers are getting the best price and consumers are able to get a dairy products at affordable price, we are going to be world to the dairy and they, you will see it is going to be dairy or animal husbandry is going to be the major source of rural economy. Thank you, everyone, for your comments and your time. This has truly been an insightful discussion. Well, dairy is the single largest agricultural commodity contributing 5% of the national economy and employing about 80 million people directly or indirectly. Much is being done by the government in the sector, and now there are incentive-led schemes to promote investment by private players and MSMEs in dairy, meat processing, animal feed plants, which in return is expected to create 3.5 million jobs. Well, that's a great note to uh, end our special program on. Thanks for watching.